Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Paragon Active Assurance Path Trace Monitor Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. Let's have a look at the topology first. In the topology, we have the control center and test agent TA1 that are connected together through the management network. So we'll be using the control center to set up the monitor. And then you can see TA1, how it connects into the service provider core using interface ETH1. And then off the other side of the service provider core, we have host1. OK, so what are we going to do with this learning byte? We want to configure a path trace monitor. And being a monitor, it's going to run for an unlimited amount of time. That's how monitors work. And we're going to trace a path from TA1 to host1. Now, the thing to remember with the path trace monitor is that it can be any host out there. It doesn't need to be another test agent. We need to start it from a test agent, but it can be any host out there can be the endpoint. And then we'll configure it to be 10 packets per second. And we'll have an aired second threshold of 0% loss. And when we do that, when we run the monitor, that is, we're going to examine the results, and then we're going to make some changes to the service provider core to see what happens with the path trace monitor. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the web interface for the Paragon Active Assurance Control Center and get this going. All right, so here is the Paragon Active Assurance Control Center web interface. And to begin, let's go ahead and create a new monitor. We could go to the left here if we wanted to and select new monitor, or since we're just in the dashboard, we can just create a new monitor with the create new monitor link. Okay, so let's click that. And we're presented with the new monitoring group workspace. So let's call this something. And we could give it a description, but unnecessary at this point. And then we need to find where the path trace monitor is located. And it's not in the TCP UDP performance section, uh, but if we go down to the reflector based section, we can find path trace. So let's go ahead and add that. And notice how this is a puzzle piece element. So we could add another puzzle piece element that would be ran in parallel with this monitor. So the first thing we want to do is specify the client. And the client is going to be TA1 on ETH1. Let's select that. And then we need to specify the host. And recall that host address is 172.29.6.100. And let's change the rate of packets from the default of 2 to 10. And then we could select the evaluate thresholds for every hop. And if we highlight over the information bubble there, we can see that what this does is it evaluates air seconds and severe air second thresholds for every hop, not just the entire path. We really don't need that for what we're doing, but just want to make sure you're aware of that option. And then under the thresholds for air seconds section, we can expand that. And by default, 0% loss is selected. You could change that if you like. It's totally up to what you need. And then we can specify a delay in milliseconds, delay variation in milliseconds, and then also an expected DSCP value. And then it's going to be the same thing for threshold for severely aired seconds. We could configure that as well, but we don't need that for what we're currently doing. And then let's go under the advanced section. We can specify the frame size, the max TTL, max results, DSCP, IPP information, protocol. Currently, we're going to be using ICMP. We can switch that over to UDP. There's going to be a lot of devices out there on the internet that will block ICMP traffic and won't respond to it. However, in our situation, we're fine. But if you need to do that, then feel free to switch over to UDP. And then we have the stable period. Now, what this does, it is what is considered a stable period, how many seconds that those packets are currently going over a specific path for it to be considered stable. And you can highlight the information bubble here, and you can see that as well. It says, the number of seconds for which all packet trains must follow the same route in order for a stable state to be assumed. And default is 10. We're fine with that. So it's going to stay at 10 seconds. And actually, let's change that to three seconds. We'll get a little more quick information when we make some changes in the service provider network. And then at the bottom, we have our SLA thresholds. And good SLA set at 99.95%, then acceptable set at 99.5%. 
And so that's basically all we need to configure here. So let's go ahead and start this monitor and see how it goes. So clicking the start button and we can start without generating a report or setting up any sort of periodic reports. And the monitor is starting up. Now this does take about a minute or so, maybe a little less, maybe a little more to actually start the monitor. And keep in mind, a monitor is something that's gonna be running indefinitely. So a few minutes or a minute or less or whatever to get this going is not a huge deal. But with that being said, I'm going to pause the video and uh, wait for this to start. And then I'll continue things from there. All right, so we have our first results. We can see that up in the aired seconds bar that there's no aired seconds. Everything looks good. And remember for aired seconds, we just had packet loss. So there's no packet loss, that's great. And if we look down here, we can see there is a graph, we get kind of an picture overview of the hops involved. And you can see here, we can hover over them. We have the test agent TA1 that is using ETH1 IPv4. And then we can hover over the different hops to get more additional information. We can see the min round trip, the average round trip, max round trip delay, and the average round trip delay variation. And this is all in milliseconds. We can see that for each hop. And we can see the IP address that of each hop as well as we scroll through this or hover over the icons. And then we get to our endpoint, which is our 172.296.100, which is host one in our example. And we can see that, okay, we're getting some delay and whatnot, and everything looks good. Now, remember, we could have set the delay and delay variation and things like that to account in the air seconds as well. And one thing you can do here is we can zoom in because that's kind of small. So you can really zoom in if you want to and look at things closely. Now, also in the bottom right hand corner, I do want to show you that we do have a little legend here showing the test agent and the destination. And we scroll down, you can see the hops regular not responding in selected route, highlighted, last not destination. So if you see that it's a problem. Then the route, no data, least used, most used. And so this is going to show up when we make changes. And one other thing I want to show is we can look at the results list and we can get this information kind of in a tabular format. And so it might be a little easier to read as well. Although the graph format gives you a nice visualization as well. And then up top, we have the reroute events. So there hasn't been any reroute events, just the first routing event. And then we can select the different hops as well and highlight whatever hop we're looking at there. So you can see hop one, two, three, and four. And so with that, I'm going to pause the video for just a minute and I'm going to make a change in the server's provider network, mess with some of the OSPF routes and whatnot. And then I'll restart the recording and we'll see what changes happen. All right, so I have made some changes and you might have just seen that. I started up the video again right before the changes happened or the change happened. And you can see that there was a reroute event and you can see that the first path, which is now grayed out, I'll zoom in. You can actually move this around too with the mouse. Really, really handy how they do that. You can see the first path, which is now grayed out, is not in use. And we can see the new path that is now in use. And if we select the reroute events up top, we can see that, yeah, there's been two reroute events, the initial event and then the change. And we can go back to the first one and get information. But we can go to the second one again to go back to the current one. And notice up here how it says the route has changed entering unstable period. Hops reached out during the unstable period. It gives a list of hops. So this is the new path, which we can hover over as well and get additional information. And one thing to point out is notice how we still don't have any aired seconds. And the reason behind that is there was a routing change, but the routing change resulted in no packet loss. So we don't have any aired seconds. We're not saying a routing change results in aired seconds here. We're just saying that packet loss results in aired seconds. So keep that in mind, even though there was a routing change, the aired seconds aren't showing up because there are no aired seconds. There is no packet loss. Okay, so with that, let me make that change or roll that change back and let's see what happens. Okay, I just made that change. So just be another few seconds and that change will cause a reroute event to happen. Okay, so that reroute event just happened and we switched back to the original path. And if we look at the reroute events, we can see there's actually three here now. There's the original, which is the original path that we're currently on right now. And then the second one, which is the bottom path. And then the third one, which is back to the original path. 
So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and run a path trace monitor. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.